Hi Virgos and Virgo Rising. This is Kimberly Knox, KK, your astrologer. Welcome to your June forecast. And I want to say, Virgos, thank you. Lots of you have been reaching out for my videos and you know a lot of things have been going on for Virgos because the eclipses have been in Virgo and Pisces, activating things in your life and bringing them to the forefront. New exciting things, hopefully, or things that just need to come out. But it's definitely been a very active time for Virgo. Not to mention you've got Jupiter in your sign for the first time in 12 years, illuminating new opportunities for you, expansion and growth in new areas for you. So thank you for allowing me to share time with you here on my YouTube channel. I'm very grateful for all your subscriptions, all of you that share my video with people that you think would love it as well. If you leave me a comment, I'm happy to get back to you. And, you know, allowing me to share my passion with astrology and instilling greater love, self-esteem, and compassion through this deeper self-knowledge and the astrology, the, the wisdom, it's, it's this great science of astrology just really brings out this deeper sense of self and um, it's just really wonderful self-growth opportunity. So let's get right to it. Gemini. Gemini is another mutable sign like yourself. We have got, let me see all the workup that's been done here. So all of the mutable signs have their angles aspected right now. And we've got a mutable T-square that's been going on since April, lining up. And uh, there's going to be a couple exact points this month. And But from that, you've got this new moon. The new moon is going to be at the, the fulcrum of this T-square, giving it the square. And filling it in as a grand mutable cross. Okay, well, mutable is pretty fun because... It's flexible and it's curious and it's social and that's helpful when it comes to this. But, you know, all squares get us into a project because we have to figure out the two energies, but they help move us along. If you have no squares in your chart and all easy aspects, then you don't generally have the nudge to go get something done. It's like getting a kick in the pants when uh, an, a planet comes and squares you or, or at least... And then oppositions are all about relationships and sorting out, you know, people that you're meeting. But this is happening up in your career zone, Virgo. So this is an exciting time for you, Virgo, Virgo rising in your career. New things are happening. New seeds are being planted that are going to come out. So let's talk a little bit about Virgo and then we'll go and see what's going on. Your ruler went direct on May 22nd, so that's important. Mercury is your ruler, so you tend to feel this Mercury. When Mercury retrogrades three times a year, you feel a little more strongly. This last one was very important in the sign of Taurus, and it was teaming up with trines to Pluto. How powerful is that? We're under that influence right now because Pluto is going to be trining. Mercury is trining Pluto this evening, so we're feeling that. You're feeling that. Your ruler let's talk about what Gemini is. Gemini represents our thoughts and it represents our attitudes. These are really important things for manifestation because personal planets that are, that are most important in this regard are Venus. We talked about Venus last month with Taurus. Venus is getting set in your value, your sense of self-esteem, what you have to offer so that you can bring it forward. Venus is a sister planet of the earth. It and her motion helps the earth line up with what we need to do to heal ourselves. But on a personal level, it's about us. It's our inner magnetism. It's our inner power and how we get that sorted out so that we're attracting and getting what we want in life. And Venus being below the horizon now, she's doing a lot of work on getting set powerfully in that sense of, of truth and intention. And we are on June the 6th when the sun meets with Venus below the horizon. It's really about giving our hearts to something that who we really are, speaking who we really are. And again, that Taurus, uh, Mercury and Taurus is about, you know, all of our thoughts and thinking are about what we care about most, what we value and our money. And 
To get more money, you have to have your sense of self-esteem and your thoughts uplifted, your attitude uplifted, because joy and happiness is not just an accident. You are in charge of that. No one else is in charge of your own joy and happiness, you. So this is a month to examine all of that. Virgo can be tied up in the critical nature. And I have to say that being critical breaks the spirit of people because they just maybe feel like they're not good enough. And we don't want that. So for you to lift up how you're thinking and speaking is always helpful around this time, as with all of us. Um, your critical eye is the one that brings that out. And you're fabulous at editing and sorting and picking out what's good from creations because you're the sign after Leo. So you're perfect at this, the whole editing and sorting and we need to know what to bring to market. Well, Virgo is gonna go through and it's gonna pick out all the gold and it's gonna sort it and, and, and it's gonna put it together so that it looks real nice. And that's the great thing. Because you don't want to go through that process when you're in creation. You just want to create. So this Gemini house is where you're curious, where you're making connections. Those connections create opportunities. So that is our key right now, is staying curious, staying open, not getting caught in dogmatic beliefs, or you know, not allowing our mind to open. So this mutable T-square in the sky, let me tell you what that means. And it's affecting all of your angle houses. Angle houses are where the action are, and they're very, they're, it's the fate and it's the uh, and it's the and it's the self like how you're taking action who you are and who you're meeting relationships you relationships uh, your career and your home those are all the biggest things so of course things are going on for you Saturn down in your home sector in the sign of Sagittarius has been giving you projects around the home or it's been helping you start over in some big new ways. Perhaps you moved into a new home, you're doing renovations in a home, you totally lost one, left one career, you, you're charging into another career, you're starting over in some new way. This is the security and the roots of who you are that's being restructured. But Saturn is asking you to stay positive, uh, look to the future, and, and be optimistic about future possibilities. And that's beautiful. So with Neptune, Saturn, and Jupiter, how have they been talking in this T-square? Just let me allow you to understand like the bigger picture of what's going on. Uh, your Neptune has been in your opposite sign, over-connecting you with relationships. So what have been going on with your relationships? They might resemble Neptunian things. Or you're meeting people that are more Piscean, Neptunian type people. You can be like that just by having Neptune on or opposite your sun. It's affecting or square to your sun as well. Visions, dreams, the ability to visualize and dream, taking that into reality, cre creating something from all of that. And um, being of service with that. Not getting stuck in the savior victim. Those are not the people that are going to be bringing you into the, the future where you want to go. The victim, you don't need to save people, Virgo. So the savior victim mentality needs to go away. The addictions need to, you need to find new ways of dealing with things so that for the addiction, that's the Neptune thing. So helping people to find new ways to not be, and if it's a partner in your life, you know, it's finding new ways for them to deal with this addictive type issues that they have going on, whether it's, Journaling, talking to a professional, um, meditation gets you into your body, yoga gets you into your body, getting into it so that you can feel it and move beyond where these fears are coming from. Because if you're living out of love, then you're living full of possibility at all times and you're just radiating possibility and fear is not keeping you back. Saturn, Saturn and Sagittarius has been about truth, our own inner truth, being able to listen to that truth. And of course, that's been finding you right at the roots of who you are. So going forward, being your own authority, listening to your guts of who you are. Jupiter in your first house. Well, this is really exciting news. Jupiter has been allowing you to blossom, to expand, to feel bigger and greater, or to bring out issues that you have that need to be expanded in some way so that they can be seen and taken care of. 
you know, that's what Scorpio does. That's what Scorpio did when it was going to the sign of Sagittarius. It, it digs down, it exposes things. And when they're exposed and, and you can see them, then you can deal with them. But Jupiter is very protective. So it's giving you this protection at all times. And this only happens once every 12 years. So when it comes into your sign, it also, it's like you get this urge of, okay, I'm going to do something new. And, you know, and, and you get this chance to do something new or to just reinvent yourself in some grand way. It went direct on May the 9th and it's going to square up with Saturn on the 26th. Um, or, I mean, it already did square up with Saturn. I'm sorry. So this last quarter square that Jupiter has been going through, this is exciting stuff because this is the accomplishment aspect of something that happened in 2000 when these two planets got together. We are now we are now taking everything we learned over the last 16 years and applying it so that we can go forward and accomplish something that we seeded at that time. Okay? So, this uh, this new moon is filling out that T square of all of these 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 um and this is what everybody is going through. But yours is affecting you in your career zone. So something big is happening where you're being seen in the world for what you do and how and you know and, and how you're you come across and and just how you shine in the outer world. It's also just a very visible time. But if it's not your career, you're just out there. You're out there in the world having fun, doing things. So this is a this is a big time for that. So these are going to push you in, in big ways. Mars Mars's action and where is Mars? So Mars has now gone back into your third house. Mars was spending some time in the fourth house, a lot of action going around there, uh, you know, renovations, doing things, possible acts. Mars rules accidents and it rules um, sharp objects, it rules arguments, it rules so those are the those are the harsh forms of Mars, but Mars pushes us forward and gets us going on projects. So now it's gone back in the third house saying, all right, you've, you've got to clean up some stuff in the third house. The third house is the Gemini house. It's your thoughts and your thinking and your attitude. It's reaching out and, and connecting and uh, speaking, teaching, teaching through ideas that you need to share. So like quick talks uh, or giving little lectures on things, non sharing knowledge. This is big when Mars goes back into the third house. It's going to stay there till. I'll get the second. So you have some time to dig in. Uh, Mars is going to go direct on June the 29th. At that time, it's very powerful. At the same time, Venus is going to be in your work sector opposite Pluto. Um, actually, <laughs> Venus is going to be in your um, in your your group sector. Right now, Venus is up in your, your career zone. So it went there on June the 25th, last Tuesday. That means it's opening up new options for you around your career. You could also be meeting someone. So singles could be meeting someone around this time up in their career area. It moves on to Cancer on June the 17th. And I was just looking at Mercury. June the 17th. And then, and then all around your groups and friends, that's where you can meet, you know, meet love relationships, or just have nice times. Venus just brings nice stuff, nice gifts, beauties, romance. So enjoy this time around your career right now. So now let's just look at your, your ruler, um, your ruler, Mercury, and where that's going. You know, because you're ruled by Mercury, it's a lot of action that happens for you throughout the month. Uh, it went direct May the 22nd. It's in your ninth house. Your ninth house has to do with this education, deeper education that you need to get, things at a distance that you're dealing with, um, people at a distance, travel, uh, to gain, uh, you, you, you've been gaining more knowledge in that area, but that's going to satisfy you when it goes into your career zone. Um, Mercury goes into your career zone on June the 12th. That's your 10th house of career. So moving over here. It's back to 24 degrees of Taurus on June the 7th. So right now we're uh, it's moving forward. It's it's uh, it's strong. It's 
trying to Pluto today. So we're getting some plan together to go forward. We're putting, we're putting the nuts and bolts together because this is the third time, third time's a charm. And uh, on June the 9th, then Mercury is going to oppose Mars. When Mercury opposes Mars, it's, uh, it's really, it's bringing us back to some place that we were at last summer. You know, this whole, uh, because Mars is back into uh, Scorpio, it's cleaning up some things, but it's activating. So there's a big activation from your ninth to your third house. So learning and teaching, learning and teaching that Sagittarius and Gemini, talking about what you know. Bring out these opportunities for yourself on... <clears throat> On June the 12th, like I said, you've got Mercury going into Gemini. So now your ruler goes into this curious, um, uh, making connections, restless variety type of, of, of sign. But it's going to be used uh, very well in your career zone. So that's how you're going to, you're going to thrive by uh, utilizing the techniques of, of um of Gemini up there in your third, in your in your career house. June uh, the 20th, we have the summer solstice. So, all right, so the sun moves into the area of friendships for you. And um, Mercury, your ruler, is going to be opposing Saturn and squaring Neptune. So this is the simultaneous, like, completing a plan and, and feeling really good about it or, you know, um, at least being able to visualize and being creative about the way you want to go. It can be a little confusing, but um, that's just a short, that's, you know, that's a short term thing. Because when Mercury and Neptune get together, it's like you visualize this big thing. So something is unrolling around that time. That's really great. And uh, June 29th, Mercury goes into Cancer. So now thinking and thoughts go into, um, thinking and thoughts go in toward family and friends, your friend zone of maybe starting a new group, creating a group, starting a meetup group at your place. July the 4th is uh, the new moon in Cancer, and uh, we've got July the 6th. Your ruler is back with the sun. You're feeling very solid at that point because the sun can bring a lot of confidence because it's the ego, it's the will, and you're feeling, you know, really good this weekend, just that weekend, have a really great time, and it's really fabulous. So those are the big things that are going on with you. Um, on June the 26th, it's the same day that Mercury, um, that Jupiter in your first house is trining Pluto in your fifth, and Mercury, your ruler, is, is in an, a nice opportunity aspect with Uranus. So that tells me that, you know, you, you personally are bringing forth your own creative goals at that time. So Virgo, enjoy the start of summer. Enjoy this new moon in, in uh, Gemini. Be open to curiosity. Look into your attitudes and your, your thought processes and kind of relax with, you know, being a little too critical of yourself and others, allowing yourself to bloom as we start the summer. Thank you so much and reach out to me at kkkkastrology.com for a more personal type of consultation.